sitting here with my special guest, a very special guest because he was my coach, my basketball coach when I was in high school. He's a West Craven football legend. He ended up going to junior college and ended up playing football with the Ruckers. Had an incredible football career, and now he's back in the Vanderbilt community. He's been running his barbershop called Razor Cuts for over 10 years. Coach TT, how you doing, Coach? How you doing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good to see you with you today. How, how you been during the coronavirus, and how you been during the quarantine? How you been managing your business and your family and everything? Well, first, you know, start off with, um, you know, being sanitary, you know, being, you know, make sure everything is infection free. People come in wearing masks and just making everything, you know, state board certified. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I know you got two daughters because I was able to assist the coach on yeah, this year. So how is it raising them during this this time with everything going on in 2020? It's kind of hard because, you know, I didn't grow up like this and I hated that. I wasn't going to say hate, but I don't like that. They got to go through this. Yes, I'm going to be a freshman this year. She missed her first, the first year, year of high school. In school. Yeah. And then dealing with, uh, you know, going to school and not, everybody can't learn. On, on their yeah. Zoom. Because I'm yeah. the type of person, I'm hands on. I never liked it in my class. So I do have to see it. Yeah. And yeah. the photographic, and I think I passed that photograph. Yeah, but it's coming along so so, but in the end, I, I just hope it worked out for the best. For the best, get a little better. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, before I get into your football career, I want to talk about your fine business to stat and razor cuts. Now, after your career, what got you into cutting hair? Well, I started cutting hair when I was like 10 years old. So I already knew this was going to be my fault. You know what I'm saying? This is your plan B. Football me. was basically secondary, but first then, I already knew this was going to be my dream was to own a barbershop. So, NFL career didn't last, didn't work with us with my injury. Yes, I already knew this right here, barbershop was my dream, so dream do come true. And yes, you know, sir. I want to get y'all a dream. Don't stop until it's good. I'm living with this. I'm living my dream. I've been here for 10 years and been established in this community, and I've been a good part. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now, a West Craven High legend, football. And I, you could have been easy basketball, too. That's well, what I they don't know. I did go to Craven and play basketball my first year when they had a team. When they had a team at Craven, yeah. Year, you know, I, you know, I went to Cali and played football at Juco, and I got a scholarship. So, so how was it choosing? How was it? Because you, your heart seemed basketball, football. Was, football. Was, That's what I'm saying. So how, how was it choosing which one you really wanted to do for college? Basically, all y'all young kids out there, you play two or three different sports, a sport that's going to take over. You know, you play, you and know. I love basketball, I had to practice hard, I had to dribble, I had to shoot, you know, I had to drill, drill, yes, drill. Sir. Football came natural. So it was mainly like a God given gift. Yeah. And I liked the contact. So I already knew I missed football so much and then I got that call and I ended up getting back on the field. It was like, yeah. That was really what I was missing in my life was football. <laughs> And then going to the Rutgers, how did that change your life? Going to college, the college, did college change your life in any way? Well, yeah, it started in JUCO. I'm a boy, I came back a man. My coach, it all depends on the coach. Man. You got a coach that care about you, life, rules, not just football. If you want to be raised up in adulthood the way it's supposed to be done. He taught us to be men before football. So that's really helped me. And then when I went to JUCO too, in New Jersey, the Rutgers for two years, I already known the goal and the steps to be become a man, and that's why I became a man in the book, because the coaching that was in my life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, you talk about the coaching was in your life, and I got now I got to step back and talk about the coaching yeah, in my yeah, life, because you yeah, was one of, the, yeah. one of the main coaches on me in every step of the way. So, talk about giving your knowledge back to the kids in this community, not within your barbershop, yeah. but with coaching and basketball and sports within itself. Yeah. Because, you know, once I started or whatever with the football career and I got the barbershop and I was like, it was something that was missing. You know, I couldn't play no more. So it was like, I'm a coach. You know yes, what I'm saying? Sir. So I was able to show y'all yeah. what I didn't get shown. So I know I can help the kids in football, basketball, whatever I was coaching or whatever. That I knew what I didn't like my coaches not to do. I liked what I wanted them to do. So a lot of coaches are really biased. 
one way. So I was like, I'm gonna show them what I like and what I didn't like. That's why I embedded it in y'all. Yeah. Show y'all the way that I didn't get taught yeah. to coach or whatever. And I knew that if the way I would have been called coach to teach the way that I taught y'all, it would have been better. It would have been a better outcome. Yeah, for, yeah. for me or for the other few peers that, that I played with. That came along with you. Along me. So yeah. that's what my whole objective was to coach y'all in the way I wanted to be coached and show y'all what I didn't get shown. You know what I'm saying? And all of that came from, you know, coaches that was in my life and the people and I knew why I wanted y'all to love my coach to become and that's embedded in y'all head as in like a brotherhood, not really yeah. I'm the coach, y'all the player, but you know I always you always it. like the way it's eye to eye down to and the coaching, I never look at y'all as They're like under. Yeah, you related. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you got a kid that can relate to the coaching, <clears throat> I can tell you one to the wall they can do it. Try to, know they can't do it, right. but they, they trust you and whatever they, they want to do for you, they'll do it, even if they didn't have to. So that's what's wrong. You know, a lot of coaches they just bias and just not getting the kid. Point, which a lot of coaches never played never too. Never played either. So yeah. They don't know that, you know, that's big. Mainly, I just want to show y'all what I didn't get shown and show y'all what I did get shown to the next level to help y'all go to get to the next level. And not just sports, but life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now, do you think as coaches today, now this is a big question for me. I got to ask coaches. Do you think coaches are scared to teach kids at an early age that some of the things that, like you said, you was back then and you didn't get taught certain things until you was older or some days you just never get yeah, got yeah, yeah. shown. So do you think coaches are scared to show kids because of their age or size or whatever? Do you think they're scared to show them the advanced stuff? I think some of them are because they feel like, you know, they're not mature enough to get it. But if you're a coach and you got a kid for four years, or six years, or whatever, how many years you got to on on up. If you gradually to show them each year, eventually, maybe that last year, or that third year, it's going to grasp. Yeah. And you'd be like, man, the whole time, you've been showing me, and now I got it. Now I got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you just show them, if they can't get it, they will get yeah, it. Yeah, get it. But if you good. never show them the advanced yeah, stuff, they, they always going to be behind. And then when they go to the next level, it's like, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And that's what happened to me when I was it's like you around saying you never talk. I known. Yeah. But I got my tail hit pretty hard on a grip block. I didn't know what to do. I just stood there. I did the yeah. same thing in the game. Then everybody showed me. And then the coach showed me. And then, you know, I'm like, I'm going to talk then. Yeah. So when I, I teach y'all that the next level you get to, you know. Yeah. It's so crazy because it you, yeah, you don't know it, but you got other kids just saying, hey, yeah. and they know it. And they didn't oh, talk another thing. Yeah. So yeah. if you continue to teach them, even if they don't get it, eventually, Four years of high school, two years of middle school, or elementary part one, eventually they will get it. Just yeah. drill, 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 drill. And after a while, they mind, body mature. And second, third year, it could be like a light. Everything moves so smooth and fast. What's next? What's next? You done been running this barbershop for 10 years. You done been giving back coach. I, I, I graduated high school in 2013. So that's seven years ago when he was coaching me and he's still out here giving his knowledge back to the kids and you. So so what's next for Coach T? Well, I'm gonna give what the Lord present, whatever it comes, it comes. But even though I'm not coaching physically on the field or on the court, yeah. I, mean, I still coach it here. Yes, sir. The kids come in here, I'm still drilling, coaching, giving them information, telling them what I think, you know, just stay positive and just still Come in here, sometimes we'll get here and I'll show them three point stands and show them the moves. Yes, sir. Like that. Even my kids, my nephew and all them, like even on the basketball court. So I'm just going to give what's presented to me. I'm going to give my knowledge, keep giving it. Even though I'm in here, anybody want to come by, talk to me. I'm at the barbershop, 7919 Main Street, Ray Shortcuts. Yes, sir. If you got anything you want to ask or you feel like you can't get it, come to me and I will help you in the best way possible if I can. And I won't steer you wrong. Just I promise you, you won't. And just mm -hmm. want to be this pillar to this community, in this area, this barbershop. And I'm going to always be a coach. Because yes, sir. I'm going to be 50, whatever. And y'all still going to be a coach. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm right. always going to be a coach at the end of the day. And I'm always going to help and provide anybody that I can help provide and give the knowledge to. And 
being a barbershop in the community is a pillar to the community. So, you know, it's always positive. Come my way, come my way, do what I can do out here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There y'all have it, y'all. That's the end of the Joshua Covington Show with my man, Coach TT, the West Craven legend, the barber, the coach. If you need him, come by here, raise the cuts in Vanceboro for advice, for a nice shape up, anything. He'll be right here. We out. Yeah. All right, y'all. Thank you for watching the Joshua Covington Show. Please continue to show your love and support by clicking the subscribe button below the video. Check us out next week on the next episode of the Josh Covington Show. We out.